Lord God, for the privilege, Lord, that we have just to come into your presence. Lord God, let us never take for granted this time that we have. God, let us forget about our problems, our wants and our desires. And God, let us focus on you this morning. For Father, we know it's not about us. It's all about you today. God, I pray for your freedom and God, your liberty in this house. God, be with us today, I pray in the mighty way. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. Let's worship the Lord as Brother Nate comes to lead us to worship. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for another day's journey. And I will echo what Pastor just said. Sister Christine, it is good seeing you with us this morning. God is still at work, still on the throne. And he's in control, amen. amen. Let's sing this first song, church, and enter into worship. I'm in this church. I'm in this church, this glorious church. I didn't join, oh, I was born, I had a new birth. Some glorious day. Go to sail away, it's by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church, I'm in this church, this glorious church, I didn't join, oh I was born, I had a new birth, some glorious day, go to sail away, it's by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. When Jesus came, He was left out. There was no place where He was welcome here on earth. But He had a plan for a house that shall forever stand. He spoke these words upon this rock, I'll build my church. I'm in this church, this glorious church. I didn't join, oh, I was born, I had a new birth. Some glorious day, gonna sail away. It's by His grace, not by my works. I'm in this church, I'm in this church, this glorious church. I didn't join, oh, I was born, I had a new birth. Some glorious day. Gonna sail away, it's by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church, I'm in this church, this glorious church, I didn't join, oh I was born, I had a new birth, some glorious day, gonna sail away, it's by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church, some glorious day. Gonna sail away, it's by His grace, not by my works, by His grace, not by my works, by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church. Okay, this is one of those old songs, church. I thank you, Jesus, because I don't know about you, but he brought me from a mighty long way. My, my, my. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. For you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for you brought me. Yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. A mighty Sing that again, church. I thank you, Jesus. 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 I thank you, Lord. For you brought me. Yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. A mighty long way. 
I thank you, Jesus. 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 I thank you, Lord. For you brought me. Yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. A mighty long way. You've been my bread. With my bread. You've been my water. With my water. You've been my life. My everything, for you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. You've been my bread, in my bread, you've been my water, in my water, you've been my life, my everything, for you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, oh, a mighty long way. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. For you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. Listen, church. You've been my father, been my father. You've been my mother, been my mother. You've been my sister, my brother too. For you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. You've been my father, been my father. You've been my mother, been my mother. You've been my sister, my brother too. For you brought me, yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, oh, a mighty long my, way. My, my, my. I thank you, Jesus. 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 I thank you, Lord. For you brought me. Yes, you brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. For you brought me. From a mighty, a mighty long way, a mighty long way. If he's brought you from a mighty long way, you shouldn't have to be prompted to give God praise. Amen. Amen. He has brought me through danger seen and unseen. He took care of me when I didn't want to be taken care of, didn't care about being taken care of. So thankful that mom literally drug us to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. Just like Sister Poole taught this morning, train up a child in the way you should go. Because when they're old, they're not going to depart from it. Like she said, they may leave church, but the training that you instill in them is not going to go away. It's Jesus. God gave me this life, and if I fail to serve Him, it's nobody's fault but mine. Let's sing this worship song, church. He's here this morning. This has come like the dawn. Jesus. He's welcome, church. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. Holy one. Sing that again. Lord, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. Holy One. Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God. 
of God, come like the dawn, open the heavens on us. We want to know you, we want to know you. Make your presence known, make your presence known, make your presence known, make your presence known, known. Holy One, Spirit of God, come like the dawn, open the heavens on us, we want to know you, we want to know you. your prayer this morning. Lift your hands and sing that again. Let your glory fall. Let your glory fall. Lord, let your glory fall on us. Oh, Spirit of God, come like the dawn. Open the heavens to know you. We want to know you. Spirit of God, Spirit of God, come like the dawn. Open the heavens on us. We want to know you. We want to know you. How marvelous How marvelous, how wonderful is your love, is your love, how marvelous, how This morning for the love of God. How could somebody love somebody like me? How could somebody love somebody that was so low? So far away from God. How could somebody love somebody that used their name in vain? Somebody that abused their body. How could somebody love somebody when they push him away? But God loves us this morning, church. He loves us unconditionally today. He don't care where you've been or what you've done. He just cares about if you'll lift up your head and say, God, I need you. And I don't know about you this morning. I need God. I need God. I want to know Him. I want His glory to fill this house, don't you? But He will not force Himself upon us. we got to want it today. 
Hallelujah. Can we sing it again this morning? Let your glory fall. Hallelujah. Let your glory fall. You want His glory to fall? Let your glory fall on us. Sing that again. Lord, let your glory fall. Let your glory fall. Let your glory fall on us. Spirit of God. Spirit of God, come like the dawn, yes, open the heavens on us. We want to know you, we want to know you. Yes. Oh, Spirit of God, come like the dawn, open the heavens on us. We want to know you. We want to know you. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. If you came to church with a need, would you slip up your hand saying, God, I need you to do something in my life. God, I need you this morning. Help me pray this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. God, even when we were unlovable. God, I thank you today, God, because you have never failed me. You have never forsaken me. Father, even in the midst of trouble, you're there. Even in the midst of trial, you're there. Even in the midst of sickness, God, you're there. And Father, I pray this morning, God, for every hand that was raised today. God, there may be those this morning that can't feel your presence. They feel like, God, you have left them, you have forsaken them, but God, reveal yourself to them today. And God, let them know you're there no matter what happens in life. You're always there. Father, I pray, God, that you'd meet the need, God, whatever it is today. God, there may be someone here today that needs a job. I pray, God, that you provide that job for them. God, there may be those that are sick in their bodies this morning. God, I pray you'd reach down and touch them right where they stand this morning. God, let them feel your healing power flow through their bodies. God, there may be those this morning that are grieving today. They've lost a loved one. I pray this morning, God, that you would comfort them. God, that you'd assure them, God, that you're with them. Father, whatever the need is, God, we know you're the answer. And God, we're asking for your help this morning. God, meet every need in this building. God, save our friends and families. God, that are lost without you. Open their eyes and help them to understand. God, they need you before it's too late. Father, I ask it all this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing this chorus and thank God. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Believe that this morning. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day, He will make a way. He will make a way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. 
He will make a way for me, and He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side, with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way, He will make a way. seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me and he will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side with love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Oh, He will be my guide. Hold me closely to His side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make a way. Amen. Amen. When the doctor says there is no way, how many knows with God there still is a way? He created us. He formed us. He's able to heal us today. I want you to find two people today, shake their hand, and tell them God will make a way. God will make a way. And then you may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Ushers, I'm going to ask the ushers if they'll come this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God still makes a way today. For I am the Lord thy God, and I will deliver thee. I will strengthen thee. I will lead thee. I will guide thee. I will direct thy paths. Trust in me, saith the Lord, for surely I am with thee, my people. I have not forgotten thee. I have not forsaken thee. I am with thee, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and give Him praise this morning? Wherever you're at in life today, God is with you. Even when you feel like He's not there, He's there. He said, I'll never leave thee, nor will I forsake thee, but I'll be with you always. And we can lean on that today. If you've drifted from Him, how many knows He's still there? Right where you left Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Appreciate the presence of the Lord this morning. I'm going to ask the ushers to come to receive the morning offering and tithe. If you have to give this morning, you give as unto the Lord. Good to have Brother Tom and Sister Mary Thompson back with us this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Tom if he'll pray over the offering. thank God for so many things that he's done for us and as this song says he didn't have to do it but thank God he did he didn't have to do it but he did oh he didn't have to do it but he did 
He sanctified me wholly and started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Oh, he didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He sanctified me wholly and started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He's blessing me today, yes he is. He's blessing me today, yes he is. He sanctified me wholly and started me on my way. He's blessing me today, yes he is. He's coming back again, yes he is. He's coming back again, yes he is. For a church without a spot and a church without a wrinkle, he's coming back again, yes he is. Oh, he didn't have to do it, but he did, my, my, my. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He sanctified me holy and started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Put your hands together, church. to do it, but he did. Sing that chorus one more time, church. Didn't have to do it, but he did. Oh, he didn't have to do it, but he did. He sanctified me wholly and started me on my way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen, amen, amen. So we were all sinners one day, and he loved us so much that he saved us, came down to be crucified and bore our sins. He didn't have to do it, church, but thank God he did. Some of you have been delivered from various disease and ailments. He didn't have to do it, but thank God he did. Amen. He's a wonderful, wonderful God. Amen, amen. Our choir is going to have a special... I just want to testify just for here real brief. The last few uh, Sundays, Pastor and others have been talking about this race that's been set before us. And I've been thinking on that uh, quite a bit. You know, I was a runner in high school, a runner in college and all that. And sometimes we maybe we go too fast. I like how that scripture says, it starts off by saying, let us run with patience the race that has been set before us because you know when we hear the word race we want to we're thinking running fast and winning and I believe the scripture also says this race isn't given to the swift or to the strong but he that what endureth to the end sometimes we go too fast we miss out on God's blessings I want to run the race with him I want him to hold my hand through this race. I want to finish this race. And I want to hear him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant.
How many believes he's coming this morning? We may not know the day nor the hour, but we can know the seasons. And it looks like to me all the signs are pointing toward his return. He may be waiting on one more soul to be saved before he comes back. Because I don't know about you, but I look on the news and look around and see all the mess, and I wonder how much more can God put up with. But thank God he has mercy and grace, because there may be one out there he's waiting on them to come back home. Amen. It may be your loved one. It may be your husband. It may be your child. But thank God we can keep praying and believing that when the trumpet sounds, they will be ready. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the kids back to junior church. Six and under can go back first. Ages six and under, if they go back first. And then ages seven to twelve. Ages 7 to 12. <laughs> walk, walk. Ezekiel chapter 22, if you'd turn there with me this morning, we're going to start verse number 25. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25 through 30. Now if you see Sister Poole get up and start running, it's not because... She's in the spirit because the snow may start. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they say it's supposed to start snowing this afternoon, so hopefully it just blows on over. Maybe it'll all go to Buck Creek, where Sister Poole lives. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse number 25. If you found that, say amen. If you don't have your Bibles, it's on the screen there for you. It says, There's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raving the prey, that they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and the precious things, and they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my laws, and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And they have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned against them. Her princesses in the midst thereof are like wolves, raving the prey to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Her prophets have, dis, have dabbed them with untempered moro, mor, mortar, I'm sorry, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord hath not spoken. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy and they have oppressed the straight wrongfully. How, doesn't that sound like today? And I sought for a man or a woman among them that should make up the hedge and stand the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. This morning I want to preach on the thought we need to take back those souls that have been devoured. We need to take back those souls that have been devoured. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the privilege and opportunity, Lord, to stand behind this pulpit. I thank you this morning that someone was willing to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for me today. Lord, that I might be able to say I'm a Christian. I'm born again. Father, I pray, God, that you would help me to say, God, what you once said here this morning. Help me, God, not to say what I want to say, but God, help me to say what the Holy Ghost would have spoken this morning. I pray, God, that you'd anoint me, fill me, and help me, God, to be your vessel. God, I pray you'd anoint every ear to hear your word. 
God, help our hearts to be receptive to hear it and to receive it. I pray it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say amen with me again this morning. We see here in the Scripture, the Bible says, like a roaring lion, rave and pray. The souls had been devoured. There wasn't a plague in the land where people were being killed or dying. There had not been a sickness that would have been gone forth where people had been sick and died. But we see here that the spirit that was in the earth at that time, or we see here in the scriptures where people had been deceived, they'd been lied to, amen, they listened to the lie of the enemy, and now we see that their souls have been devoured. They believed the lie of the enemy. They were taking advantage of the poor and the needy. Amen. They were making the things that were supposed to be holy, amen, not holy anymore. The things that were vain, they were trying to make holy. Amen. We see here that the people of God, the people of God had been devoured. Their souls had been devoured. Amen. The Bible says that God, amen, was going to destroy the land because of all the evil and all the things that were going on at this time. Amen. We read and we hear, amen, of things that are going on in the newspaper and on the TV. Amen. And almost everything that I read here in scriptures going on in America today. Amen. You can say, you can paint a nice, pretty picture of how blessed America is. And yes, we are blessed, but we're killing ourselves. Amen. I'm not going to get into politics. I'm not a politic preacher. But I believe today that if we do not stand in the gap and make up the heads, there are souls that are going to be continually be devoured by the lies of the enemy. Amen. I'm sick and tired of hearing people, amen, give up on God because they listen to the lie of the enemy. And that is what happened to the people of God. Amen. They listened to the lie of the enemy and now God was going to destroy the land. And if God destroyed the land in that time, we better watch out today because we're a whole lot worse I believe in what they were back then. But thank God for His mercy and His grace. But do not take advantage of His mercy and His grace. There is a line in the sand that we can cross, and God will say, enough is enough. Amen. Go get my children. We sing, He's coming, church. He's coming. It's not time to slack off. Amen. The Bible says they had taken the treasure and the precious things and they made her many widows. Amen. The people of God, amen, are taking treasures, the holy things of God that we should treasure, amen, to ourselves and they're just making it like they're nothing. Verse 26 said, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed, showed any difference between the unclean and the clean. Amen. There are preachers, there are priests, amen, that get up every Sunday and they preach a watered-down sermon. How many knows today sin still separates us from God? Things are vain before God should not be brought in the house of God and tried to be made holy. Amen. People have been deceived and devoured because of false teaching and false preaching. Our sins and our iniquities separate us from God. God does not welcome sin into the house of God. Don't get me wrong. We are to love the sinner. 
but we are not to tell them it's all right, go ahead and continue living the way you're living, and God's okay with it. How many knows this morning God's not okay with it? God still requires His people to come out from among the world and live a different life. When we come to Christ, we should live different than way than way in the we before we came. Let me stop. I want you to hear it. We should live differently when we come to Christ than we live did before we met Christ. We should not be living the same way we lived before we came to Christ as we did in the past. Amen. God requires us to live different. God requires us to live holy. I'm not talking about how long your hair is or how long your skirt is. I believe God wants us to dress holy and to live holy, but that's not what God requires. Amen. God requires us to live holy on the inside. And I believe when you start living holy on the inside, it will start showing up on the outside. Amen. People have been deceived today. They think they can live any old way and God's all right with it. God is not okay with it. Amen. The Bible says they hid their eyes from my Sabbath. Amen. One of the biggest things causing people to slip away from God. Amen. I heard Jensen Franklin preaching this morning. Amen. And I'm not trying to copy Jensen Franklin, but he was saying so many people today, and this is what I already had in my notes before he even preached it. Amen. So many people today can watch preaching on the internet. Amen. They can watch uh, preaching. Amen. In their pajamas eating cornflakes. Amen. But how many knows God still requires His people. Amen. The Bible says neglect not the assembling of ourselves together even more when we see the day appearing. Amen? God still requires us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy by coming to church. So many people think they don't need to come to church. They can stay home and watch it on the internet or watch it on TV. But how many knows it's not the same? When you can come together with brothers and sisters and you can come into the presence of God, amen, and feel the Shekinah glory of heaven, yeah, we can feel that stuff at home, but it's not the same as when you're in church. The Bible says they have hid their eyes from the Sabbath. We think it's not that important anymore to come to church. Uh-oh, not one amen. Huh? I understand if you can't get here and you have to work or if you're sick. But I came to church sick and felt a whole lot better when I left. And I'm not telling you to come pass around germs. If you've got pneumonia or something and you can't come, I understand. But if you're just laying out of church, how many knows God don't like that? Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Amen. Don't let your eyes, amen, become dim and thinking how important it is to be in the house of God. Amen. We need to hold the Sabbath and keep it holy. And so many people set their schedules around many things. Why not set your schedule around God? I believe God will give you enough time through the week to do what you need to do if you remember Him on Sunday. All right, it's getting quiet. I'll move on. It's still important to be in the house of God. But people have been deceived today thinking, I don't need church. I don't need to attend church. I don't need to come to church. It's not that important anymore. Amen. They can watch it on TV. They can hear it on the I mean hear uh, hear it on the internet and different things and I believe those things are a blessing. Amen. I believe God uh, ordains those things, but those things cannot replace your time that you have in the house of God. Moving on. We need to be careful. Amen. When somebody says, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And make sure it is according to the Word of God. Amen. There are people getting up. Amen. Behind pulpits. Amen. On platforms saying in the name of the Lord. And God's not even in it. We need to make sure everything that says, thus saith the Lord. 
amen, goes according to the Word of God. If somebody stands up and says, Thus saith the Lord, and it goes against the very Word of God, how many knows we need to close our ear to it? But people are being deceived and devoured because somebody stood up and said, Thus saith the Lord, and they spoke a word that didn't come from God. We need to know what the Word of God says. If we don't know what the Word says, when somebody says, Thus saith the Lord, we may fall right into the trap. And not everything that glitters is gold. We need to be careful. Amen. I don't care how spiritual we think we are. We can be devoured by our enemy if we listen to the lies of the enemy. Amen. We live in a time where anything goes. Amen. We live in a world today where anything goes and we think God's okay with it. We're supposed to accept sinful things and we're supposed to say, God is okay with it. How many knows that's not true today? They were living in a time where the vain things, they were trying to make them holy. The things that go went against the Word of God, they were trying to bring them into the house of God and trying to say these things were holy. There are people getting behind pulpits that are walking a sinful life that should not be standing behind a pulpit. I'm not here trying to say that I'm better than anybody else. i got faults and failures like everybody else, but I know when I fail I need to get on my knees and I need to ask God to forgive me. Amen. We might as well rip up the Word of God if we think anything goes today. Sin still separates us from God. I'm mad at the devil this morning because people are listening and being devoured by the lives of the enemy thinking it's okay, God understands. I can live my life however I want to live it. But how many knows this morning we've been bought with a price. We're no longer our own. Amen. We are to glorify God in our bodies and in our spirits. Amen. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And we are to live unto God. Amen. Jesus bought you with His blood. And we're to honor Him with our lives. Not saying I can live any old way and God's okay with it. Amen. We need to stand up this morning and we need to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We still amen, need to live our lives as Christians today. I'm tired of people being snatched out of the kingdom of God because they listen to the lie of the enemy. Aren't you? I believe this morning we need to stand up today in the power of His might. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We can't fight this fight this morning with our great wisdom and our great understanding of the Word of God. We may be able to get up and quote, Thus saith the Lord, Thee, thou, and thus, this, and that, and think all these King James words we can quote is going to get the job done. We may whisper a little prayer and think that's all, all they need. We may think we can fight this fight because we belong to the Lafayette Pentecostal Church of God, but how many knows that don't mean nothing? We cannot fight this fight unless we stand up and be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. It's not how strong physically we are. It's how rooted and grounded and how deeply we are in the Word of God today. we got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. If you're going to stand for the Lord today, in this day and hour you live in, you're going to have to get rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Because you can be deceived. The Bible says the very elect's going to be deceived. We need to know what the Word of God says. We need to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. How does that come? By spending time in prayer, by opening up the Word of God and finding out who He is and what He's all about. How many knows this morning He's a good God? 
He's worth getting to know today. Amen. I don't want to know him about what grandma and grandpa told me about him. I don't want to know what mom and dad told me about him. I want to know him for myself. Amen. So when my enemy comes, amen, snipping and roaring and trying to devour my soul, that I can stand up and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. There are souls that need rescue today. There are souls that used to sit in these pews today that no longer go to church anywhere. And they need rescued. If we're going to rescue anyone, we've got to stand strong in the power of His might. I don't know about you, but i got loved ones that used to be in church that are no longer in church. I'm tired of the lies of the devil. I'm tired of seeing people deceive, thinking they don't need God, they don't need church. I can live my life my way and I'll be okay. Amen. We need to tell them there's still hope. There's still hope in Christ. Amen. Sister Poole was teaching on, amen, Samson and how he got away from God, but then he got back to God and his, his hair began to grow. Amen. And he got his strength back. Amen. We may know people that are away from God. Amen. How many knows God can restore them? Amen. And he can give them back the joy of their salvation. But we got to be willing to stand up and tell them. Not say, it's all right, honey. God understands. I'm not saying go point your finger at him and say you're going to die and go to hell if you don't change. That's not always the way to do it. Because they're not going to always respond. But there's a time and place that we need to be bold. But there are other times we need to show them love. Not condemnation. You should have known better. You were in church. You should. How many knows they don't need to hear that? They already know that. But we need to show them love. And we need to go to our prayer closets and call them out before God. Amen? We see here the children of God. Amen? God's chosen people. Amen? They'd taken the vain things. They tried to make them holy. They were robbing and stealing, taking advantage of the needy. And now we come to a place where God is ready to destroy the land. And He speaks and He says, I sought for a man among them. It should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. If we're not willing to testify and share with others that are lost without God, those that used to sit in church that have strayed away from church, if we're not willing to go out of our way and tell them about God, we might as well close the doors. Because you know what? Eventually we're all going to be gone. Amen? We're going to die off. If we don't birth new children, the kingdom of God here is going to be void and no good. Because the saints have all died off. I'm tired of the devil stealing our kids, our loved ones. If every one of our kids and grandkids and our Husbands and our wives, all of our media family were saved. And in church this morning, this place would be full. But for some reason or other, they've listened to the lie of the devil. And we've not done nothing about it. Are you willing to stand in the gap and make up the hedge this morning? Uh-oh, nobody. Are you willing to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, your enemies today? The Bible says to even love our enemies. The Bible says He sought for a man and I couldn't find none. What if today God would ask, I'm searching for a man. I'm searching for a woman to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Is there somebody willing to stand today and say, I want to stand in the gap. I want to make up the hedge for those souls that have been devoured and listen to the lie of the enemy today. As the singers, musicians come this morning. There are souls 
that have been devoured from this church. That may not bother you. You may think, oh, that's all right. They'll get what they deserve. Hmm? I've heard people say that. Christians, they'll get what they deserve. I mean, those our hearts ought to break this morning. When somebody slips away from God, the Bible says they're a treasure in His eyes. We are treasures in the eyes of God. I don't care how many times you've used His name in vain. He, you're still a treasure to Him. I don't care how many times you have failed Him. You're still a treasure to God. As we stand to our feet this morning, as we bow our heads and close our eyes, first of all this morning, maybe you're here today. Maybe you're not where you need to be with God. Maybe you've listened to the lie of the enemy. Maybe you've listened to the lie of the world where you think you can just live any old way and God's okay with it. If you're here this morning and God's speaking to your heart, the altars are open for you. I want to stand in the gap and make up the hedge for you today. If you're here without Christ, God loves you. God cares about you. God is concerned about you today. He knows exactly where you're at and where you're standing this morning. But He will not come to you and He will not force you to these altars. But He'll come and He'll stand at your heart's door and He'll knock. If you're here today, God's knocking at your heart's door. Would you come? The altars are open. Come and say, I need Jesus. I'm tired of living my life my way. I want to try it God's way. If you're here this morning, you need God. The altars are open. You know who you are. God's not going to make you. God's not going to force you. He's going to nudge you. If you're feeling that nudging this morning, would you come? God wants to help you today. God wants to come into your life and change you. He wants to help you this morning. If you're here without God, would you come? Come kneel at this altar. Now this morning I want to ask every child of God who's sick and tired of the devil, who's sick and tired of seeing Christians backslide, children being stolen right out of the very house of God. If you're tired of that and you're willing to stand in the gap and make up the heads, I want you to join me across the front of this church. You got kids. You got spouses that are away from God. You want to stand in the gap and you want to make a heads. Let's make a line across the front. Come on. Everybody ought to be up here. If we have to, go down the sides. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. If you need to make it out, going down this way and down the sides, let's do it. I want you to join hands with your neighbor. I want us to bind together. I want us to pray for those loved ones. Pray for those kids, grandkids, neighbors, husbands, wives, children, whoever they might be away from God. I want you to stand in the gap and I want you to make up the head. Satan is trying to devour them. Satan is trying to destroy them. But you need to tell the devil this morning, enough is enough. I will stand in the gap and I will make up the heads this morning. Let us pray together that God will bring them home where they belong. Father, we come before you right now. We plead the blood over every family member, every child, every adult, Lord. God, those that are standing in the gap this morning, 
Give them strength. Give them courage. Give them boldness this morning. But God, more than that, give them a burden. God, that their loved ones might be saved. God, before it's too late, Father, I pray right now in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. We call them out of darkness into the light today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hungry for more of you Like never before I'm hungry for more of you Let your manna from heaven fall out on me Make me all that you want me to be Everything that I do Lord, I'm hungry for more With where I have been And this feeling inside me I just can't ignore Lord, I am hungry for more I am hungry for more Hungry for more of you like never before, I'm hungry for more of you. Let your manna from heaven fall down on me. 
making me all that you want me to be in everything that I do. Oh, I'm hungry for more of you. Lord, I've emptied myself of all that I am. I ask you to fill me all over again with more of your power and more of your grace. Lord, fill me until I've been changed. I am hungry for more. I am hungry for more of you. Like never before, Lord, I'm hungry for more of you. Let your manna from heaven fall down on me, making me all that you want me to be in everything that I do. came forward and said, I'm willing to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. But it doesn't end here. It doesn't all happen here. When we go home, we got to find a prayer closet and we got to shut the door. The Bible says, I said it Sunday night, when Zion travails, children will be born. Travailing doesn't just happen in the house of God. Travailing happens at home in our prayer closets, calling out those loved ones that are lost without God. So when you leave today, I want you to find a purpose, find a time throughout the week and call out those loved ones that you stood in the gap for today, on Monday and on Tuesday and on Wednesday and on Thursday and on Friday and on Saturday. Call their names out before God every day this week, will you? Will you do that? Yeah. Amen. How, how many will do that with me? Amen. Every day, spend some time calling out somebody, your child or somebody else's child, or somebody used to sit by in church that don't go to church no more. Call them out before God. Let God do something in their life. Amen. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the presence of the Lord. Remember the announcements, 5 o'clock choir, Tuesday night men's meeting, Wednesday night Bible study. Brother Roy, will you dismiss us in prayer?